he has affected you, whether you know it or not. Whether you've heard his name, or know how to spell his name, or know how to say his name, even if you don't know any of those things, he's affected you. If you think walking the talk, or practicing what you preach, or being an authentic person, if you think those things are important, if you've ever taken a leap of faith, or if you know someone who has, um, if you've ever been affected by the fields of psychology, uh, then you have been affected by Kierkegaard, whether you know it or not. Um, and it, so he's interesting from that point of view. His influence on us and the way we talk to ourselves about ourselves has actually been quite an influential thing. But as a man, he also was quite an interesting guy. There was almost a riot at his funeral. Um, for a generation or two of people in Denmark after he died, they weren't called Soren. Boys weren't called Soren because of Soren Kierkegaard, because of the association with his name. He was so unpopular. He had a newspaper, he had a popular newspaper uh, make fun of him for about a year, that every single day they printed cartoons and caricatures and made fun of him for a, for a year. And he would have children come out on the street and throw rocks at him as he's passed. Uh, so he had a notorious existence and it was all because he was trying to reintroduce Christianity into Christendom. And he set himself against the idea of Christian culture for Christian reasons. He was trying to get people to not assume that just because they were part of a certain nationality or certain culture that they were Christian. And for doing that, he, he blasphemed a lot of gods. You can always tell what, what gods society worships when you find out what you're not allowed to speak against. And he spoke against things like nationalism and patriotism and some of the sort of church group identity, the idea that becoming a Christian meant being part of a group. And when he said, actually, being a Christian might set you apart from the group, that made the group unhappy. And so he was insulted and made fun of. And that's why he had an interesting life. An understanding of Kierkegaard will give us, he helps to give us a way to articulate our relationship to the groups around us in the world. So Kierkegaard was very concerned about you as an individual. He thought you as a person was more important than any group that you were a part of. So people are tempted to think that what's most important about them is what church they're a part of, or what nation they are, or what race they are, or what gender they have, or whose family they're a part of. We tend to identify ourselves primarily based on the group. He saw the way that what will happen in a big he called it the herd. The herd mentality, well, people will give their identity into the herd in order to let the group do all the heavy lifting for them. I don't need to worry about being a Christian. My group has done it for me. I don't need to worry about being an authentic person because the group I'm part of is doing it for me. So when you start to notice that dynamic going on, he's, you can use Kierkegaard to help you see how inhuman human groups can become how an individual isn't allowed to really be a, an individual person inside these groups. They're required to subsume their individuality into the group, to let this group do the work for them. What is unique about my book, as opposed to other books on Kierkegaard, is that, well, there are a lot of books on Kierkegaard. And the problem is, is that if somebody just wanted to know about this guy's life, or just wanted to have a quick kind of insight into the sort of things that Soren Kierkegaard wrote, they'd have to wade through these intellectual biographies that were made for specialists. So my unique approach is to take, separate the two. So Kierkegaard's life for people who just are interested in what it was like for this guy to live and work in 19th century Denmark and all the riots and all the great things that happened as a result of his work, you can do that. And if you wanted to find just a brief overview of each one of his books, he wrote over 24 books. If you want to have a brief overview of his writings, I've put that in as well, but I've separated the two. So it's unique because it has an educated lay readership in mind. It's not meant for specialists.